In today's video, I'm going to share how I like to hand off my Figma files to developers. Of course, it's not the way, it's just one way, and uh, it's not all or nothing. Some things might work for you and some things may not. Anyway, the first tip is the naming of your file. So typically when developers work, they'll be using some sort of tool to organize and keep track of what they're doing, like a Jira or in this example, Linear. And uh, when I create a Figma file that I then subsequently hand off to developers, I want to make sure that the naming of my file is the same as the developer's task. So if they have a task, let's say this one, that's called collections, I'm also going to name my file collections and I will use the issue number, in this case it's dev-24 to prefix it. Another part of the name, as you can see here, is I have an emoji. In this case, the green check mark means that the file is more or less ready to be worked on. Of course, there could still be some tweaks here and there, but it's 80% there and it's something that I feel comfortable with, with developer just picking up and starting to work on. For files that I'm still working through, that may be like 50-60% there, that maybe the design is not exactly solidified yet, I would just use the hourglass emoji. From my experience, I found that just having this two emoji is sufficient enough. Moving on to the content of the file. So typically I would have two pages, one with and one without annotations. And in some instances, if there's something that really needs to be explained with a prototype, with a flow, I'll have another page that's called prototype. But the overall gist is that I like to keep my files small. So annotations, I like to treat canvas. So this part here as the main source of truth for developers. So one thing about the inspect panel is that it's usually very not accurate. And aside from things like color, maybe typography, you typically would not get an accurate information that you want the developers to get. So for example, uh, let's say we already have this card component that's just called card in our database. If you look at the inspect panel, you see something like this. And that's not what you want the developers to implement or re-implement. You want them to use the card. You don't want them to like set the fixed width to some amount of pixels. You want it to be like obviously responsive. So it has to be a grid. And another case for displaying things directly on the canvas is that again, as a developer, in order for me to get information about a specific layer, I kind of just have to like keep on clicking and, uh, it's a lot of like back and forth, like trying to ignore information that I don't need and trying to find information that I do need. Which is why as a designer, I like to point out all the essential stuff directly on the canvas. It also helps to ensure that important little details don't get missed. So for example, if I didn't have this space annotation here, maybe for some reason the developer like skips or forgets or accidentally writes some other value, just kind of eyeballs it. But here, because I provide the exact value that I want, there is a higher chance that it will get implemented accurately. Now let's talk some more about these values. Going back to Figma, currently the only way for us to measure spacing is just pixels. And there are tons of cases where we don't want to use pixels, especially for like paddings, margins, and uh, we want to be using rems instead. Another thing is that many of us use design tokens. And even if we don't use tokens, our developers probably use some sort of framework that helps them to speed up the implementation. And in this example here, I'm basing it on Chakra UI. If you go to Chakra UI documentation, you can see that they have like a spacing scale, which translates into ramps, which is most of the time is what we want. As a designer, I want to make sure that developers are using ramps, proper token values, and are not just hard coding pixels, which is why I like to add a spacer annotation that has the correct value. I know sometimes it can get overwhelming constantly trying to convert like pixels to RAMs to like your frameworks values. So I like to keep the pixel to RAM converter open and you just need to make sure that you have the correct root uh, font size um, set right here. A couple more things about annotations. You can also use them to specify things like box shadow, border radius, which in the case of border radius, again, Figma wouldn't tell you, oh, it's like the four pixels is what you call base in your code base. It will just show you four pixels. You can also point out things for the page heading structure. Like here, we want to make sure that this heading is coded as H1. Adding all these annotations might sound overwhelming, but it's actually not too bad. So the thing is that your designs would probably be more annotation heavy when you have some new custom components. But then for any future tweaks, small things, typically the biggest thing that you would be annotating is spacing. All right, so once I have all my like designs, all my annotations, what I do is I make sure that all annotations are grouped together in their own groups. And then I create exactly the same page that just 
doesn't have all these annotation scripts. So one thing that can sometimes happen is I may need to do some tweaks to this design or like add a couple more annotations. And even if I have to do it just like two or three times, the work of removing annotations and just like creating another page does get monotonous. So what I did is I made a plugin that helps me to automate this process. So let's say this is an unfinished version of this file and it just has one page. I do have all the annotations, but now I just want to finish setting it up. So what I'm going to do is go to plugins and this one is called the annotator and I'm just going to run it. And so as you can see, it renamed this page to be called with annotations. And then the other page is called without annotations. And of course it doesn't have any of the annotation groups. I fully realize that it only saves me like 30 seconds, but it really does add up over, over time. Going back to our finished file. So I have my annotations page and one without annotations. And lastly, if there is a prototype that needs to be included, I mean, usually they would look somewhat more complicated than this. I would create a page with just that prototype. And while you can see all the prototype links when you're on the Figma's prototype tab, I do find it helpful to also include just some arrows on the default view. So you can see where the flow is going and how everything is connected. And there is a simple plugin that you can use for that as well. So just to demonstrate, you're going to go to your plugins, you're going to click out of flow, and then you're going to select two frames and it will create this arrow here. One thing with this setup is that you might end up with a lot of files as you keep on working this way. So what I like to do is typically like eight months later or like a year later after this stuff gets implemented, I would delete this file. Of course, this doesn't mean that I'm totally like losing all of my uh, designs. As you can see here, this design is a page level component, which I keep in my design system, my component library file. So this file here. So if I ever need to use this view or if we're doing like tweaks to this page, I can just grab it directly from here and I don't need to go like searching through some other files trying to find it. Of course, uh, given that I'm currently showing you just an example, this file only has just a handful of components, but typically depending on how big the app is, you could either have a page per component, or if your library is small enough to where you can group the components depending on your size. For example, if you use atomic design principles, then you can have a page for your atoms, page for your molecules, organisms, templates, and pages. And of course, another thing that I like to include in my overall component library is a page with my annotation tools, which I then use for my annotations. Okay, I think I said everything I wanted to say for this video. A couple closing thoughts. The first one is about the handoff piece. Yes, I say handoff, but it doesn't mean that I literally give the file to the developer and like never speak with them. And there is like this like very harsh divide line. So no, it's still it still can go like back and forth. There might be some tweaks to design clarifications, it's it's an ongoing conversation. But the thing I want to make sure that developers have their own space, like this Figma file where they can just work in and I'm not also simultaneously in this file doing some other unrelated design work that's very far off from what they are working on. And the last thing is whichever process you have, whichever process you adopt, it has to be done because it helps you do your work better. So if you try something here and you only find that with your team, it's only brings in more like clutter, more necessary process. Please don't keep on doing this and maybe try something else. Anyway, thank you so much for watching this. I'll link this example Figma file, also any of the plugins that I mentioned and some like further reading materials that you can check out in the description. Let me know if you have any questions or if there's anything else I can expand on and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.